Hey yo, from the kingdom of Ohio, this is O Culture, where we groove to the beat of that celestial drum. I am Ryan Peverly, your ceremonial master, the Zodiac Thriller. That's right, Thriller, not Killer, but I am definitely killing those ear holes right now because I am sliding into that cochlea of yours at 528 hertz with the sound of pure, raw, unprotected love. You're going to catch something fierce from this inner discourse. I guarantee it. Anyway, thank you so much for being here. You know I appreciate that free time. And you know I appreciate your support as well. And I've got to shout out some new subscribers to the show right up front here. My thanks to Bruce, a.k.a. Dark Future Cult. He's joined us at the initiate level, $1.11 a month. The first step on the journey of self-discovery and well on his way to a state of true enlightenment. Thank you so much, Bruce. And a big thank you to my parents. They are now supporting the show at the Ascended Master level, $13.13 a month. Mom and Dad, thank you so much for believing in this project and in me. I love you. Only took 36 episodes to convince you to hop on board, but hey, you're here now. You're along for the ride. No turning back. Full speed ahead. And hey, if you want to join Bruce and my parents and our other supporters, hit up oculturepodcast.com slash support to check out our monthly and one-time donation options, including an option for Bitcoin, which, after this episode, you may want to consider investing in. Why? I'm glad you asked. Because we've got another returning guest in the house. His name is Carmen DeLuccio. He's the astrologer in residence at the website Collective Evolution, which, if you haven't visited, is worth a look. Carmen has sort of become my personal astrologer. He's been helping me with some astrological business here and there. I also refer to him in my head as the Fabio of the Zodiac because he looks a little like Fabio. Or maybe a lot. Or maybe not at all. I don't fucking know. What I do know, however, is that we're talking the astrology of the Great American Eclipse on August 21st and how that'll affect us as individuals and as a collective We're also talking some outer planet retrogrades and some cryptocurrency, including what may be in store for Bitcoin and its biggest competitor, Ethereum. We also get into some talk on superfoods and nutritional alchemy and how you could possibly use astrology to improve your health. So some speculation paired with some practicality, my favorite sort of conversation. Maybe it'll be yours too. Only one way to find out, and that's by casting this pod off into the houses that the gods built. Enjoy. Carmen DeLuccio, good to talk to you, man. You too, Ryan. Happy to be here. Happy to be back. Absolutely, man. Happy to have you. So first of all, I know there's a lot new with you, but I think the biggest news is that you have a new astrology show with Collective Evolution. What's up with that, man? Uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, it's a work in progress right now. It hasn't officially been launched yet. We're still kind of figuring it out a little bit, but it's part of a new members area that they launched a collective evolution. There's going to be exclusive content. It's, um, it's, 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 uh, it's accessible to people who donated to their campaign that they did last year, but it, they have it hasn't went public yet. Uh, so right now we're doing a weekly show where we're talking about things. Like sometimes we'll talk about what's going on in the world, or sometimes we'll give a little bit of an astrology lesson and then i end it with a forecast um but where you know it's possible that the format might change and we might do it on a different um maybe do it bi-weekly or doing it doing or maybe do i don't know we're not sure do it we're not sure we're still kind of hammering it out but uh but so far yeah we've done a bunch of episodes and it's still unfolding but i'm in a period right now where um you know i've been writing articles for a long time or for a couple two and a half years and doing some other things on social media but i've been looking at other ways to deliver more content more frequently through instagram through the show through more doing more video and stuff like that so just kind of uh, playing around with that kind of stuff i was excited to see you you know talking about this new show uh when it was first started i I don't know what it was a few weeks ago probably i haven't seen any of the videos because i don't have access to them i guess yeah it's no one really has it's kind of like i've been teasing everybody about it for a while but it hasn't uh been a little bit delayed with the launch but we might what, what might happen is we might there might be certain clips that we might put out publicly on the Collective Evolution page or on their YouTube that everyone can see, and then the whole seg- the whole show you- you'd be able to watch in that in the members area. They're going to call it the Explorers Lounge. So, like, yeah, like Consciousness Explorer, right? Is that is that kind of what we're talking about? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. There's just it's kind of a cool name, Explorers Lounge. The show's called Cosm, so we're just yeah, we're trying to we're just we're just kind of you know I want to 
where I'm at with what I'm doing is that I feel that part of my purpose in the world is to not only like talk about what's going on in the astrology, but to help and not only to help educate people about astrology, but to plant that seed, like more do more than that, like sort of plant that seed in the collective consciousness that, you know, astrology is real. Astrology has so many applications. Like most people have a, a very, very limited understanding of astrology. So I want to I want to really plant that seed in people's heads that, you know, I believe in the future we can have specialized astrologers. We, we don't you know like if you have a health problem you go to a medical astrologer you have a relationship problem you go to a relationship astrologer slash therapist you go to you know you have any issue you have you have a fertility problem you have um you know you want to get some financial advice or something or whatever you know it's it's right now because right now the astrologers most of them just do like one-on-one readings and some of them experiment dabble in other areas as well but i i, I think in the future a lot of current occupations that already exist if they add added that astrological level like they used to it used to be astrology was the main science up until you know not too long ago three four hundred years ago but so i i just kind of feel like that's part of my mission and i want to do that in in new ways i want to do it in interesting ways i want to do it in entertaining ways um i have a few ideas for different types of videos to kind of you know just kind of do it and sort of i like to do it in kind of indirect ways too so um that's kind of where i'm at you know so this show is kind of like that we're, we're kind of staying along with the you know, collective evolution produces a lot of different types of content. Uh, my content always kind of falls under the consciousness, spirituality side of the website. But collective evolution also talks about like news and and what's going on in the world. And so we figured, you know, let's let's talk about the astrology of certain events that are happening in the world, like make the astrological correlations look at it from a big picture. And so um, we've been trying to figure out, you know, how do we do that? You know, the CE was gonna gonna have a newsroom before, and now they kind of I don't know what how where that's going, but so so we're, just, we're including in this new show, but I'm going to be actually, you know, I'm actually in the process of um, I'm actually writing a few articles about the uh, great American eclipse that's coming up and Pluto and Capricorn, where I'm going to talk about the astrology and talk about, you know, what's going on in the world, which I, I haven't really done on CE yet in any way other than the, the show that we're doing. But I have actually never did an article like that before. So it'd be interesting to see how it, you know, how it plays out, because this is content that it will, you know, conspiracy theorists will, will like it. And uh, but then the astrology people. People. Some of them will like it. Some of them aren't necessarily into conspiracy theory. So we'll see how, how that goes. But I'm really it's been something on my list for a while because, um, you know, it hasn't really I think a, a lot of people that are into consciousness, a lot of people that are into um, conspiracies, into truth, into seeking. I think the vast majority of them are, are kind of unaware of how the astrology is playing out in terms of um, the changes that are going on in the world in terms of like government, in terms of banking, in terms of the way we're controlled and all that stuff. And so um, I'm excited to be putting out, uh, you know, there's content out there on the Internet. There's other astrologers talking about this, but not um, it'd be interesting to see when, when we put it on a platform like Collective Evolution and where it, it already has all that mix anyways in that website. So, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're definitely living in strange times, you know, some rather yeah. enlightening times as well, if you know where to look and. I do think astrology can help contextualize times that we're living in, at least on some level. So, you know, you mentioned a couple of things, the Great American Eclipse, uh, Pluto yeah. and Capricorn. So let's just get right into what I'm calling Astrology 2017, the remix. Last time we spoke uh, in December, we recapped some events that took place, you know, during the latter half of 2016. We talked about the astrology behind them, you know, things like Trump's rise to power, the protests at Standing Rock, and then we previewed the most significant astrological events that were happening in the first few months of 2017, and I actually went back and listened to that conversation, Carmen, and our general conclusion was this. A lot of shit is going to go down in 2017, so tell me, from where you stand, or I guess you're sitting right now, from where you sit, what has your impression been of 2017 astrologically to this point has it been what you expected based on your interpretations from a few months ago yeah i have you know i wasn't i wasn't like expecting a whole lot be honest with you i was more sort of looking towards the summer and the fall that's when when more of the act that's when things really start to um and and even into next year that's when the action really starts to kick in but um you know, so far, you know, I have to say, like, with, you know, I mean, the main thing going on in the world is Trump's presidency and everything that's been sort of occurring with with that is was very predictable for me. You know, it's one of the things I think I said, I think I mentioned something that 
I heard from another astrologer about how there could be sometimes when Saturn's in the galactic center, sometimes there could be like some uh, there can be like that's when we start a recession or something like that. We haven't seen that. We haven't seen that yet. I still think that's coming. But what we have been seeing is, is a lot of the Saturn, whenever planets align with the galactic center, the energies of that planet really, really get really strong. And so Saturn has to do with like limitation, restrictions. And so when Trump won, you know, one of the biggest news story in the world was him banning Muslims from entering the country and, and his his whole approach to defending borders and, and kicking Mexicans out and all that stuff. That's very Saturnian. It's very, it's like restrictive. And so we've seen the Saturn energy really step up and, and but not in, in, in sort of the economical way. But uh, yeah, other than that, I'd say the, the big thing going on is this, this eclipse that's coming up. And uh, did we talk about it last time? We might have touched on it. I don't remember. Yeah, well, I mean, we, we talked about it for quite a while actually oh we uh, did oh yeah i mean i don't think we should not talk about it it's on my list of things that i definitely think we need to address here so so yeah so the big thing though is okay so this eclipse because whenever there's an eclipse the, the effects of an eclipse start to kick in about six weeks before you know maybe even you could even argue this one could even be earlier and uh affect the following six months until or a little bit less than that until the next eclipse eclipse season every six months roughly we we have more eclipses and so this one because it's a it's a total solar eclipse it's not uh so total eclipses are the most powerful and it's the whole basically the pathway of the you know while the eclipse is happening the it basically cuts right across the united states from the near the pacific northwest up until oh, i don't even know what state that is but probably it looks like maybe south carolina or something a little bit north of georgia i don't even know what state that is but so basically cuts right across the country it almost cut it almost divides the country in two and um there's even a website called the great american eclipse they have a, a, an image their, their logo is basically shows the the eclipse dividing it in two and it's red and blue uh, and so you don't even really need to be an astrologer for for this one um it's because whenever there's an eclipse eclipses let me give people just a back more of a background on eclipses eclipses represent um you know an ancient times whenever there's eclipses especially even lunar eclipses um people were a little fearful of eclipses like oh shit an eclipse now now what's gonna happen and so eclipses are our time of changes our time of shifts that but sometimes you might notice it you might notice the energy you might feel the energy during that moment but it, it, it like i said it influences a long-term period and it's part of our evolution it, rep, it reflects some aspect of our personal evolution our collective evolution and um eclipses there's two kinds of eclipses well, there's solar and lunar, but there's two kinds of solar and there's two kinds of lunar eclipses. The first type is is what we would call a north node eclipse, and the second type is a south node eclipse. So the north node eclipses show a direction that we need to move towards to serve our evolution, and the south node shows whatever wherever the south node is, it reflects like whatever sign it's in, like certain energies of that sign that aren't really serving us. We need to kind of you know let go of and move beyond those things, right? And so some of the themes going on in the world might reflect that whether you agree with them or not this one that's coming up is a north node eclipse in leo right at the end of a leo it's aligned with a very powerful star uh, regulus which is the heart of the lion for individuals i'll say this eclipse is about the north node has entered leo since may and this energy the leo energy started kicking in earlier in the year when, when we have lunar eclipse in leo but so for the next year and a half or so especially now especially the next few months this, and, then, and then to the fall th- there's a need for us to step more into our leo energies right there's a need for us to step more into our creative potential into our uh into our heart more into our self-expression into what makes us unique what makes us stand out what you know for everybody leo represents a lot of different things and for everybody it might be some of like some of those themes not all of them depending on where leo is in your chart uh, and depending on your whole chart but leo it has to do with playfulness has to do with fun has to do with love has to do with passions has to do with generosity but it has but a lot of it has to and it has to do it could have to do with leadership too for some people so for everybody in their own way during this time there there's a need for them to step more into some aspect of the leo energy in one way or another 
Now, if you're more, if you're familiar with your natal chart, if you know what house Leo is in or what houses Leo is in, you can take a look at that. Especially this eclipse is right at the end. It's at the Leo Virgo cusp. So, so if you're aware, you can see what house it's in, and that'll give you more clues as to what it means for you. But for the collective, for the world, for the plant, for the United States, it's very, um, you know, whenever, wherever, the, see, the eclipses will affect everybody on the planet. But um, if it's wherever the eclipse is actually visible from, the energy is even more powerful. Right. So a lot of people like to, you know, a lot of people are talking, they've been talking about this eclipse for years. There's a whole website dedicated to it. And a lot of people are like so excited to go, go to the eclipse, be right on the pathway of it. And astrologers are like, I don't know. I want to get away from there. I don't want to be anywhere near that. So it's, it's anyways, it's, it's for the net because it's over the United States. It is very powerful. It does. I predicted Trump winning the election because of this eclipse, because this, this eclipse is aligned with his chart. It's aligned with his rising sign. And it's, um, and just, you know, it literally divides the country, which that's what he does. And so, so I see what I'm seeing. And we have this eclipse hasn't even really started yet. The energy hasn't even really kicked in yet. I'm, so when this energy kicks in, I would expect that there will be more division in the country, maybe civil war. This eclipse is also triggering Donald Trump's Mars because um, he has a Mars rising. That's very. That's why he's very like he's a fighter. He's a warrior. He doesn't. He doesn't. You know, he just. He'll just. He doesn't care. He plus he's got Uranus too. He's just a rebel, and so it's hitting his Mars. So I would imagine that some his Mars energy is definitely going to be activated. So he's going to step up his fighting game. Well, the, these eclipses have been. Hitting Trump's first house for a while, at least the last year, year and a half. I'm not sure. I don't have his chart in front of me, but so there's been a sh- like new beginnings in terms of his identity, self identity. And so for him, that meant becoming president. And so this is the final one. This is the last one in his first house, right on his, in his, on his ascendant, on his Mars. So this is like really creating a change in his identity even more and probably has something to do with that Mars energy, like more people. You know, everyone knows he's crazy, but more people might start to look at him as uh, like this a war president, maybe. And, and maybe it could have to do with him going to war with other countries. It, maybe there's one astrologer that that may, thinks maybe this can trigger something with Iran. Maybe I don't know. But I think this I think we're going to really see the, the warrior side of Trump over the next six months. And, and um, yeah, it would be interesting. We have to also understand, too, the, the United States is going through there's some other things going on at the u.s with pluto and capricorn and all that which we'll get to that but what i want to say though is that this eclipse when we forget about all that stuff like how it's affecting the united states you know even it's gonna be visible from canada too so anywhere where it's visible but um but the path does is right over the u.s doesn't go over canada this eclipse does have some nice aspects in it you know it is a nice eclipse i'm i'm it's good pretty good for me I think. <laughs> and so I, I'm kind of looking forward to it. But um, so I talked about all the Leo stuff, but it's making a trine with Uranus, a really tight trine. And so this is all about like, new things, exciting things. It could be like unconventional. Uranus is, is exciting, unconventional. It's it could be rebellious, but it's a nice Uranus energy. It's it's innovative. So I think for anybody who is um, doing anything you know, like I like to use myself as an example is I'm, you know, I'm doing a lot of things online. I feel like I'm you know, stepping more into my creativity, into my creative energy, shining more. I, I kind of just look at it like um, for anybody who's doing anything like that, like doing things online, this is a really good energy. We're trying to make have a presence or trying to do their own thing, step into their creativity, step into their leadership, step into their passions. This is excellent energy because of the Leo and for, and for everyone to kind of step into their 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 shine more and the Uranus. Uh, hitting it you know it's all about technology it's all about being innovative it's all about new ways of expression it could be the internet um, now for other people you know that, that doesn't mean it's going to affect everybody like that obviously but for other people it, there's like a lot of new new energies uh, coming up another thing too is saturn saturn is going to be ending its retrograde that week a little bit after that so saturn's going to start moving forward so for a lot of people during that month like august september there's going to be some changes there's going to be some shifts there could be some new beginnings and then there's going to be like a, you know, things kind of a lot. You're going to see, feel people are going to feel more of a push of, you know, things happening, you know, things getting solidified, things getting stable more. Not maybe not necessarily stable, but things because Saturn's also involved with this eclipse and things, um, you know, people may be grounding out. If people have certain ideas or anything like that, it's a time to like make them a reality. It's a time to, you know, bringing innovation into your work, into your careers, into your responsibilities for some people. So it's overall, yeah, it's a nice, it's a pretty nice eclipse clips you know overall um, now the u.s is also 
going through, we talked about before, Pluto and Capricorn. It's really going to, you know, especially over the coming years, it's going to really affect the country a lot more. What's going to be happening is, I guess I should touch on it. You know, Pluto and Capricorn has started in 2008. It's going to end in 2024. And Capricorn has to do with structures like government structures, banking structures, the way we do business. And Pluto has to do a transformation, renewal, rebirth. And so Pluto's been, while Pluto's been in Capricorn, it's been, we've been experiencing a slow process of us becoming more dissatisfied with the government, more dissatisfied with the establishment, all the shit coming out with like WikiLeaks and, and Edward Snowden and all the stuff being revealed, uh, fake news, all the people are waking up, people are questioning everything. We had two anti-establishment politicians in the last election that almost, you know, either of them could have, the other one could have won if he was chosen the Democratic leader. And so, you know, it's it, it, this is a time where people are really, we're past the halfway point of Pluto and Capricorn. People are really want change, right? We and even over the years with Occupy Wall Street, Black Lives Matter, uh, Standing Rock, all this stuff. It's, we've never seen all this stuff happen all at once. And so the, the Pluto and Capricorn is this is a time of, you know, changing countries and uh, changing the way go like governments are run, structures, banking and all that stuff. And so during this time, like the United States is because the United States is sort of the dominant country, kind of runs the show. That's the country that's actually being affected. That's the country that we sort of look to first. And the last time Pluto was in Capricorn, it, you know, in Britain was getting demolished. And uh, in, and the United States was sort of the birth was what was created out of the last Pluto in Capricorn, because the United States was basically like the colonies were didn't want anything to do with Britain anymore. They felt oppressed by them. And and so now people kind of feel the same way. People are starting to feel oppressed by the current U.S. government, by the current, not just the U.S. government, but the whole global establishment. And, and people are starting to make a lot of noise now. And, and so that's why you got Trump in there. And that's why Bernie almost won and all this other stuff. And so it, things are starting to heat up more now, especially we've got a guy like Trump as president. While this great American eclipse is happening, while I don't think they're going to have an eclipse I don't know if we're going to have an eclipse as powerful as this one in our lifetimes. And again, I don't I'm not sure because it's it's powerful. It's aligned with that powerful star, too, especially over the United States. But so what's going to happen is the end of the year, the Pluto and Capricorn energy starting December and throughout those next couple of years, it's going to really escalate because Saturn is going to be entering Capricorn as well. It's going to be joining. Eventually, it's going to join Pluto. It's going to it's going to be in the, joining in the same sign. But eventually, it's going to be conjunct Pluto. So Saturn is going to really step up it's going to really amplify that pluto what, what pluto and capricorn is doing saturn's going to really come in and, and ground it make it you know make it like it's it's going to be more in our face at that time and um saturn when saturn enters you know capricorn does rule like i said banking structures structures government structures business and pluto while pluto is sort of the transformer it's saturn is kind of like restructurer redefiner and what Saturn will test things. Okay, this doesn't work anymore. We got to change this or this doesn't work. And so we're going to see when this happens, we're gonna, like I said, all this stuff is going to step up. Another thing that's occurring is that with banking, with, with money, with all that stuff, we're seeing a big shift in terms of, you know, how money is, is being like the way we use money and bank money, st banking structures. And so over the years, I, I think we've already talked about it before, I'm not sure, but in 2009, a year after Pluto entered Capricorn, we saw the birth of cryptocurrency through Bitcoin. And so this has all been, Bitcoin's been going up in value throughout this whole Pluto and Capricorn. And uh, it hasn't even really hit mainstream yet, you know? And, and so I think that when there is, I believe that there will be some sort of economic collapse over the next three years, maybe even after. But I think it's over the next three, three and a half years, two, three, four years, something like that. I think it'll happen. So I think things like Bitcoin, things like cryptocurrency, there's other ones, there's a bunch of them, but there's a few popular ones. I think they might be sort of the, they might become sort of like a replacement for money or it might be, or everything, like right now, everything's backed by the US dollar or everything's sort of compared to the US dollar. Um, US dollar is a dominant currency. It might become Bitcoin or another cryptocurrency. I, that's my theory. I could be wrong. It's interesting times but and and even how you know more people are becoming more aware of how the banks and the federal reserve how they kind of control everything like way more people are aware of that now so everyone's just fed up with all of it and so people are willing to invest in the revolution right when you buy when you buy bitcoin 
it's like investing in the revolution. That's how I see it. And so, and even business too, like, you know, we're going through a shift in how we do business. We've had over the years, we have had so many brick and mortar stores closing. Amazon just bought Whole Foods. <laughs> you know, all these, the way we do business has been changing. Social media, when Pluto was in Sagittarius, that's when we saw, you know, the internet started to really take shape. And, and, so, and then by the end of it, social media was born at the end of Pluto inside Sagittarius was media. And now with Pluto and Capricorn, the transformations in media are facilitating the transformations in how we do business. So that's another, you know, another big thing. And I think this year with all the, you know, Uranus affecting the eclipse and Uranus is trying Saturn, was trying Saturn throughout this year. Um, this is the time for people to, uh, for anybody who's in business or anyone or with their, anything related with careers is a time to integrate, you know, I find this is a time for a lot of people where they can sort of work towards achieving more independence and in what and in, in what they truly enjoy doing and following their passions and related with to their career. There's so much great energy for that. So, yeah, kind of went all over the place there. But I, hope <laughs> I, I was going to say there's a couple things that I want to say to what you just said. And the first was going back to the eclipse. I had planned on going to a spot in Kentucky, which is about five hours from where I live, and it's supposed to be, I think, the location in the U.S. that has the most visibility to it. But And and I actually talked about this. I talked about this on a, a previous podcast a few months ago, and I was like, I'm going to this spot in Kentucky on the day of the eclipse. If you want to hang out, let me know. But then the closer that the date gets, the more that I'm like, you know, I don't really want to go i don't know why i think that or i feel that way but then you said earlier about how most astrologers are like well i don't know if i'd want to you know go there and part of the reason i that i don't want to go anymore is because i read a a couple news stories recently that this town in kentucky is expecting up to five hundred thousand people and i was like whoa wait a minute that's okay i don't mind going to a concert where there's a couple thousand people or whatever I don't know if I want to be in a small town in Kentucky with 500,000 other people. So that's part of the reason that I'm kind of like pretty iffy on it now. But I'm just curious, like why you said most astrologers wouldn't want to do that. I'm kind of being a little bit exaggerating a little bit. But but like, yeah, a lot of I, I think for this one, it's not as bad because I actually like the chart of this eclipse. But but yeah, traditionally, because eclipses were you know, saw as like, oh shit, you know, something's going to happen. What's going to, like, they always saw time, things could shift, things come up at eclipses. So that's why they, they, they knew that if you're somewhere where it was more visible, then it's a lot more powerful. And they didn't really know. I think a lot of it also depends on how it's affecting your chart too. You know, it, I kind of didn't say that part too, but, but, and some astrologers might be like, no, still, they don't want to, cause it's, you know, there's something shifting. Even, even the good eclipses can be a little bit uncomfortable too. And back in the day, they were, it, people were more fearful of eclipses, but it's this one because it's a North Node eclipse. It's more about like new beginnings and, and cause it's got some nice aspects. It's got some tough aspects. No, it's got one tough aspect, but it's, but overall it's got nice aspects. So it really depends on, on the person if, if it's affecting you in a tough way then then i would say yeah maybe you might want to avoid it if it's affecting you in a good way it might be okay you know i don't i don't to be honest with you i don't even have the full answer for that because i've never really um you know since i've been paying attention to it um to eclipses and stuff like i haven't really you know there's only been so many eclipses that have been visible since i've been studying astrology that i've you know and and then when i actually started remembering what occurred and all that stuff you know it's just i haven't i I don't have enough experience to really say you know like there could be some eclipses that could be that actually it could amplify the good effects if you're there i'm not sure but yeah but traditionally like a lot of like when i talk to a lot of astrologers that's how that's their a lot of them that's their attitude they don't want to get anywhere near the eclipse even though it might be a good one depends on the astrologers some astrologers have more of like um astrologers who are a little bit more traditional look at everything more negatively right and um modern astrologers look at even the negative stuff with with more optimism and and um like yeah well this is going to serve my growth and my evolution so i think a lot of it also depends on the consciousness of of the people you know the back in the day they weren't astrology wasn't used like nowadays astrology there's more like evolutionary astrology. We look at more of like our evol- how it serves our evolution and all that stuff. So from that school of thought, the eclipses are more like embraced and like, yeah, you know, what's this is going to help me in my evolution. Whereas um, from a traditional mindset or from even like a 
um, a, a different con- a mindset of a different consciousness, you might might be like, oh, you know, because some people are not. There's a lot, a lot of people there who could be studying astrology, but they might not be on board with their self development, which is a lot of astrologers. Um, <laughs> so that's so uh, yeah. So I guess that's kind of the best way to to sort of answer that. But but for me, I don't know. I've been kind of thinking about it. I'm like I've been making jokes about it. Yeah, I'm not going anywhere near there. But but to be honest, maybe it would be because I like the way it's hitting my chart. So well, maybe um, I just need to yeah. Maybe I need to look more into it. You know, uh, from an astrological perspective, relating to my own chart, I haven't done that yet, obviously, but. Uh, yeah, I'm look, I'm, well, I'm looking at your chart right now. Uh, I just pulled it up, and I would say that it's not mm, – it's, it's making some good aspects to your little bit, but it's not like – I don't know. I think it can go – it can be – it can go either way for you. It, it's It's got uh, – mm, yeah, I don't know. It's not, it's not like making like – as good aspects to your chart as it is my chart. So it can go either way. You have a lot of Scorpio. It's in Leo. Leo to Scorpio energy can be a little bit challenging. It is kind of making some nice aspects to your moon, kind of. But then you got Saturn on your moon. So um, for you, I would say it could go, yeah, it can go either way. It, you have to decide what you want to do. But for me, I, it's 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 like making all these like really nice aspects with my chart. So um, well, I'm glad that you have good aspects, and I'm just <laughs> fucking like fifty fifty. Hey, do whatever you feel like doing. And it's like, well, okay, that's that's how I do feel though. I do feel like fifty percent go, fifty percent don't go. So it's probably going to be. I hate to say it because it does require a bit of planning on my end. But it, it's well, you're going to still be see it a little bit. You're still going to see it from Ohio. So sure, yeah. I think the only thing that holds me back is just the amount of people that they're expecting in this area. Because if I've learned anything yeah. from large gatherings like that, they don't usually go well. So. <laughs> Well, here's another little thing I want to share with you and your audience is that whenever you plan to do something on an eclipse, if just say you plan on you leave just before the eclipse, you make your start your trip or whatever it is, a lot of times or you arrive somewhere shortly before an eclipse, especially the closer to the eclipse, you got to be careful with doing anything right before an eclipse. I remember one time I went to... um I, when I lived out in the mountains, I went to, um, it was my friend's birthday and we wanted to go to Hot Spring. That was a couple hours away. And, um, it was a lunar eclipse in Fergal. And I remember, and it was make, actually making some nice aspects to my chart, but I don't remember if it, it might have been a south mode eclipse. I don't remember. That's when I was first studying astrology. But I remember we just left and, um, like, sorry, about an hour after we left or a couple hours after, an hour and a half after we left, I, my car, I drove over a block of ice and I, I destroyed the bottom of my car. Gas was pouring out. We were like running. I thought my car was going to explode. And, and, uh, so, you know, whenever, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, whenever you plan things right before an eclipse, a lot of times, I had a friend, he went to Burning Man, uh, last, last year for the first time and he arrived the day of the last eclipse and last solar eclipse and it was a tough one it was a south node no sorry it was a north node one sorry but he arrived the point is is that he arrived right before and so um he had he ultimately it was a good experience for him but that weekend he he was like it it was really tough he got beat up that weekend like like psychologically he just went through a tough time and you know he arrived just before the eclipse so if you just say you make you make your trip the day before and then you arrive like i think a lot of people that are going there are probably gonna have crazy experiences while they're in that town of kentucky or maybe that week following or something or you know even even like let's say you're gonna start a business or something right before an eclipse it's it's usually depends on who you talk to but based on my training it's advised definitely advised not you know stay away from from that eclipse as much as possible you know so you got to take that into consideration as well Hmm. so that's why i wouldn't like if you're already down there for a few weeks and then you're like oh i'm gonna be here for the eclipse anyways whatever fine but let's say like you leave like a little bit really close before the eclipse and Kentucky's not that far from you right then uh, I would be more uh, cautious of it too even though this is a north node eclipse you know it's, it's still the it, they can still kind of they can still rock you so if you do something like that so well I guess you know my vibe now is to just maybe sit this one out but hey maybe I'll just take the day off of work you know and just chill and hang out and see what happens I wanted to circle back to something you brought up, cryptocurrency, and I've been interested in that for a couple of years now, but I haven't, it's a very service level interest, I haven't really dug that deep into it, I do own some Bitcoin, 
But I'm really looking into. I, I got this. I got this intuitive feeling like a week ago. That was like I need to get some crypto. I need to either invest in more Bitcoin or uh, maybe something like Ethereum. Uh, yeah. That seems to be like the biggest Bitcoin challenger, at least to me. So yeah. I want to talk just a bit more about cryptocurrency and its relation to the economy and astrology, because you know one of the one of the areas that astrologers focus on a lot is how it affects the economy, which is, I've never understood that because it seems that it's very much manipulated by man. And I yeah. don't know if, if they're working with the celestial movements to manipulate it, but it just seems that, you know, a small group of assholes in suits somewhere is, is in charge of this thing and really has nothing to do with the stars or the planets. But I think when you look at something like cryptocurrency, that grassroots sort of movement does play into what we've been talking about in terms of structures changing. So... I was just curious. We have seen a lot of fluctuation in the price of Bitcoin, uh, even just mm. this year, and we've also, you know, seen the rise of of other ones. So I'm wondering if you have any insights, astrologically speaking, into what the rest of the year or the next couple of years may mm. hold for cryptocurrency in general. First, I want to say I remember back in 2013. Well, I first heard about Bitcoin in 2011, and when it was four dollars, and um, I heard about it from these guys who were like computer programmer type of, type of people. And so they're the only people who really knew about it at the time. And so they told me about it and light bulbs went off because, you know, I knew that there was going to be an economic crisis coming up and everyone would talk about gold and silver as the safest way to, to uh, retain value. But I always kind of had a problem with that because gold and silver are, you know, mining gold and silver is bad for the earth. It's, it's, you know, we shouldn't be taken out of the earth. And so, um, karmic, it's just, you know, it's not, I don't, I, I, so when I heard of Bitcoin, I'm, light bulbs went off. I'm like, this makes so much sense. And, um, and I knew, you know, Pluto's in Capricorn and this is, er, you know, earlier in the beginning, a few years out, four years later. And, um, so I actually tried buying it and I couldn't buy it. It was so hard to buy it. It was, uh, there's a lot of barriers, like no one, it was so confusing. So I just, then I just forgot about it. And then 2013, People started started talking about it a little bit when the news started going up. There's some incidents that happened and it brought the price up and then and then it went to twelve it peaked at twelve hundred and, and it was in a bull mark. People are just it, it was in a rally and then and then all of a sudden then it, it, it was in a bubble and then it went down and over the next coming months it just it went like to back to six it went like I cut in half, then it went even lower eventually and then um, and everyone was like, Oh, screw Bitcoin and blah everyone kind of turned their back on Bitcoin. Not everyone, but a lot of people did. And I remember saying to everybody at that time, I'm like, no, 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 no. You guys have, even if you bought at 1200, okay, yeah, you took a hit, but you might as well keep it. Cause the, the thing is, is like, like I said, I got this Pluto Capricorn in the back of my mind. I got those other things. I know what's happening astrologically. So I know that long term, like if people are, see right now, the price of Bitcoin is going up for all these little reasons. You know, there's, there's, People, some a lot of people now are buying it just as an investment because they're seeing that it keeps going up. But there's all there's all these a lot of people who have Bitcoin. They're all a lot of them are buying it for all these different reasons. But what's going to happen when you know Pluto's just halfway through? It's just a little bit more than halfway, and and you know Saturn's coming in later in the year. It's going Saturn's going to be in Capricorn for the next couple of years from December for the following two and a half years. Jupiter is going to come in there, and and um, there's some other things going on too. So what's what's going to happen when this energy really gets activated? What's going to happen when there like the price has been going up this much and there hasn't even really been an economic collapse yet? There's only like probably one percent of the population, at least or one percent of the United States anyways, or less, maybe maybe less that actually have Bitcoin. Right. So so a lot of people are like, oh, it's the price is too high now. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, no, 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 no. Wait, <laughs> wait, wait until shit goes down. I don't know for sure 100 percent what's going to happen. But like all I all I'm seeing is seeing changes in structures of, of banking structures, money. How, and so we have something like Bitcoin, which is the first one, the first cryptocurrency. It's the gold standard of cryptocurrency. Then we had light. Litecoin was always number two. And then and then lately we've had Ethereum. I'm going to say that probably there's maybe it'll be Ethereum. I, I'm leaning more towards Bitcoin or, or there, maybe there could be something else. Whatever this new model of cryptocurrency, this new direction that we're going in is definitely 
going to play a big part of what Pluto and Capricorn is creating. Definitely, hundred percent. It's definitely it's like it's de- it's like aligned with that perfectly. Now, whether it's going to be Bitcoin, you know, or whether it's going to be another one, I ultimately I don't know. I have the chart. What I think is the astrology chart for Bitcoin. I don't have. I have a chart that might be the chart for Ethereum, but I'm not sure. Ethereum is a little more confusing because Ethereum, I think, launched as a different name originally. It was, I think, it was first called Frontier, then they called it Ethereum. So I have a few chart, but I, I don't even know if any of these are even the right chart. But Bitcoin, I'm, the Bitcoin chart, I'm a little bit more confident. I'm just not, I'm not sure about the location of the Bitcoin chart. I think it was Tokyo, but we're not 100% with that. So based on the data that I have by looking at the Ethereum and Bitcoin, I would say that Bitcoin looks like it has a stronger chart with the with like i said with this data that i'm not 100 percent certain about but it looks like ethereum might have bigger based on the data which i'm less sure about it looks like ethereum could have bigger gains this year with that eclipse that eclipse the chart that i have there's a good chance that even if this date and time is wrong there's a good chance it could have been close to this time like within a few weeks or a week or something the way the uh this eclipse that's coming up, the Great American Eclipse, it's hitting this chart in a way that I would expect that there would continue to be gains. But I'm not 100% on that. And I'm not a financial astrologer either. I don't I don't know enough about financial astrology is like a whole different beast. But I do know, you know, I, I can tell the strength of charts and things like that. And so the 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 Bitcoin chart so far looks looks there are some things in it. I'm like, I'm like, I don't know about that, but it looks pretty good. What I would rec what I'm doing is that I'm I had some. I bought I bought Bitcoin. I bought some before when it was really high, when it was like a thousand and then it went then it crashed. And then I I bought some when it was in summer of twenty fifteen, late summer when it was like three fifty a Bitcoin. It went down a lot. And I'm like, this is the op- I knew that that was the best opportunity. So I bought some and then Eventually, I had, you know, I had to sell some of it and I was hoping to buy it back. I kind of regretted it. But what I'm doing right now is that, you know, whenever I'm able to buy some, I'm, I'm making sure that I have some Ethereum right now. But what I might do, I might have been buying a bit of Bitcoin, Ethereum. I was thinking I'll even buy some Litecoin just for a short period. And then when we get to what I might do is when we get to the end of the year, maybe I might switch the Ethereum to Bitcoin or I'm not sure. I have to, I have to think about this more. I might maybe get in touch with uh, some financial astrologers, see what they say. Because the only thing about Bitcoin is that Bitcoin has a lot of Capricorn in the chart. And so Saturn's going to be hitting all the Capricorns, going to be hitting the sun in Capricorn. It's going to be hitting the chart ruler probably. I'm not sure that, that Saturn, usually Saturn is a contractive, restrictive, limiting energy, right? So it's a lot of times I'd be like, oh, I don't know about that Saturn, but I think in this case, because of what Bitcoin is and because of other things that I've noticed in this chart, I think that the Saturn probably will. It'll it'll sort of the Bitcoin will start to become like more defined, like, OK, like th- this is a serious because a lot of people, some people still kind of joke about it. Some people, a lot of people, some people don't take it seriously yet. Uh, so this is over the next coming couple of years um, when Saturn enters Capricorn at the end of the year. I think that Saturn is going to sort of like define Bitcoin and, and people are if people are it's going to be more. Uh, taken more seriously or there's, there's could be some that's what i think so i'm a little bit unsure about that you know all that saturn stuff or maybe what could happen is that bitcoin maybe maybe bitcoin could take another hit maybe over the next couple maybe it might rise then take a hit or something and then but eventually go back up again and then, then get taken more seriously or something like that I, I'm, I'm not it's hard to say exactly but overall i do see you know if you want to really play it safe then you just look at all the top cryptocurrencies bitcoin ethereum litecoin and um maybe just spread out spread your money into all of them and, and then yeah. you know just just kind of uh that's a good investment right now i see like a lot of, i live in um toronto outside of toronto and the, the price of real estate everyone's been buying real estate over the last 10 years and real estate's gone up so much a lot of people made money and I'm, i've been telling people buy bitcoin <laughs> bitcoin went up way more and uh i've been telling even people now like sell your house now and buy bitcoin because it's it's so high right now and it's not i think it's starting to go down now actually but real estate so because bitcoin can go like people are complaining now it's too much money it's like three thousand canadian it's probably it's like a little over two, two, well, I don't know, probably 24 American. I'm not sure what it is now, but people need to understand that it can, Bitcoin can go up. There's one analyst, a mainstream financial analyst on mainstream news said that um, he thinks Bitcoin in the next 10 years could go up to 100,000 for Bitcoin. Jeez. I, when I saw that, I'm like, I think that's very conservative. I think it could be more than that in 10 years. 
you got to take all this into consideration. So that's why I think crypto, like, so I'm not sure, like, like I said, with what, what's better, Bitcoin. I feel like I'm leaning towards more Bitcoin. I think a good, if people really want to protect themselves from any sort of economic collapse, then I would say you do the Bitcoin, maybe buy the gold and silver. Just, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. But like, you know, let's say there's the only little dis- one disclaimer I would say is that just say shit really hits the fan. Like, let's say there's like civil war, economy collapses, stock market collapse, everyone's chaos, you know, people fighting for food. Then probably the maybe electricity will get cut off. Maybe certain things will get cut off. Maybe the internet, the, your your LTE network will get cut off. So then Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is going to will suffer from that, right? Because it's digital. It's, it needs all that. It's dependent on that infrastructure. So that's the little disclaimer I would give. But and that probably would affect it, you know, might affect the price. But the thing is, is that you can put you can put digital currency, you can put it offline too. There's ways to have it offline. So people are worried about getting hacked or whatever. Or And even if everything shut down, like let's say all the servers, the infrastructure shut down, eventually it'll go back up and eventually everything will still be there. You know, your Bitcoin will still be there and all that mm-hmm. stuff. So, but yeah, it's hard to say. I'm just kind of looking at, I, I, I kind of, I'm a little bit extreme when I think of things that could happen <laughs> i'm thinking of it in a, an extreme way like shit's gonna really hit the fan but I, I don't know if it's gonna i don't it might not be that bad actually but either way i i see bitcoin as something that it's already in place and it's getting more popular you know there's a little country cyprus in 2013 they were having economic problems and um, the government started taking money out of people's bank accounts and in, in cyprus and yeah oh, people yeah. P- people started buying bitcoin like crazy and and they doubled the price i don't know they brought that's when it was like less than 100 bucks but um they drove the price up a lot a little country like cyprus right so most people never even heard of cyprus what's going to happen when you know the united states europe european union you know this pluto and capricorn is going to screw up european union european union and the united states (laughs) you got to think if you know what the potential problems are like this is this is what's going to happen in the future this, we know that this, this is the things that are sort of inevitable that are going to happen. And if you, you know, like a lot of people are complaining, a lot of millennials are complaining about, you know, it's so hard now, everything's so expensive, you know, and, and even people who are struggling right now. But whenever there's some, some sort of economic collapse, some sort of challenge, there's opportunity, there's, there could be huge opportunities, right? And if you, instead of complaining about the current conditions, if you look at the potential future conditions, and if you just plant your your chips properly or whatever you, you, you plant the right seeds then you can you can actually prosper from it and kind of let allow it to get you help you get ahead and then you know i think a lot of these bitcoin there's all these bitcoin millionaires some of them are going to be billionaires eventually and then a lot of them are good people a lot of them a lot of people who are originally into bitcoin the, the original people are, are like good people they want to create change in the world and and these guys are going to be some of them are going to be billionaires soon right so i'd rather have them billionaires than you know all the billionaires the one percent they're running the world now, right? I appreciate your advice and, and insights there. And I'm definitely, uh, I've been thinking about investing more into crypto anyways. So it's nice to hear that it does seem to be the right decision right now. I wanted to circle back to some more hard astrology just for a moment before we wrap this up. But uh, we have some outer planet retrogrades going on. What ones are retrograding and what can we expect from that particular space weather? So the outer planets, uh, we would consider Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, or some people might just consider Uranus, Saturn, sorry, Saturn, Jupiter, and Uranus to Pluto. They consider them transcendental planets. But I just, to me, they're all outer planets, I think, past Mars. And so those planets are retrograde roughly 40% of the time because of our orbit and and the the earth's orbit and their orbit and like retrogrades are basically if you believe in the globe earth if you believe in flat earth then it's probably a whole different explanation but based on the globe model retrogrades occur when when our position of our orbit when we're at a certain position of our orbit around the sun and and that that planet is at a certain position yeah i have to show you visually but like it's based on those positionings then the planet appears to be going backwards so from our perspective it's going backwards but around the sun it's still moving it's still not it's not moving backwards and so when a planet goes retrograde anything that's associated with that planet during that period it's kind of like where we go back we revisit we backtrack we reflect we redo we reconsider we or express it in different ways that planet could there can be like an inward more of an inward energy reflective so the outer planets like i said they're retrograde 40 percent of the time so i don't put as much emphasis in the retrograde the whole entire retrograde like i do let's say Mercury, Venus, Mars, 
right? Mercury is actually retrograde. When you actually calculate the total, it's retrograde a little bit less than 40% of the time because it goes retrograde every three months for like three weeks or whatever. But Mars and Venus a little less frequently. And those planets, when those planets go retrograde, they're more like in our face. You know, Mercury goes retrograde like everyone knows. Mercury retrograde. Venus, Mars, we notice them a little bit more because those are personal planets, right? But when, when the outer planets go retrograde, I make more of a big deal out of when it changes motion because when it like like uranus sorry neptune changed motion like a few weeks ago three weeks ago or something two three weeks ago so during when the neptune is going from direct to retrograde it's stationary it's like oh it appears like it stopped that to me is is the most significant because it's transitioning it's it's moving and it's, it's going into what they call retrograde it's kind of like an underworld but to me to keep it kind of more practical is i look at it as a time where whatever that planet represents whatever it rules that's when those things come up more during the, you know when it's changing motion and that's when you might you might want to backtrack you might want to reflect on something you might want to re- express that planet in ways that maybe you used to express and you're revisiting so recently we had neptune retro- go retrograde so it's still almost station it's picking up now but it's kind of it's kind of stationary it's really slow and neptune represents uh, you know, it's spiritual, it represents our dreams, it represents our imaginations, it represents, it's, it's, uh, it could be magical, mystical, it could be very creative. Um, re- it rules things like visual arts, graphics, video rules, uh, it can even represent poetry, music, things like that. But Neptune also rules drugs, escapism, alcohol, addictions. It rules, um, it rules when we're unreal, just unrealistic and we're delusional, when we're deceptive. Yeah, just not being realistic about things, avoiding things. And, and so if you, any of those, for so what some people could have noticed is they could have started to revisit the positive aspects of Neptune, maybe, right? Where maybe they're tapping more into their spirituality, maybe meditating more, just an example. Or like with me, I really started stepping up my Instagram during when that happened. And, and uh, Neptune rules like visual, visual pictures and graphics and things like that. And also in any negative way where you express Neptune, it could be a time where it sort of it comes up more or like, let's say, I don't know, like, let's say you're the type of person that you used to like you used to like drink every weekend or something go to a party and drink or or hang out with your friends not and drink and that you're like that was almost like a habit of me and let's say you you stopped then neptune retrograde comes back and your friend your old drinking friend calls you or something or right? yeah, just some examples right and so the, that that's you know for everybody it depends you know there's other variables too where it is in your chart and stuff like that so so that's what the neptune retrograde but it's gonna be retrograde for like five months right so it's not like you know, this whole five months we're, we're, we're getting beat up by Neptune retrograde. No, it's just that, that it's just that energy is going more inward. It's going more reflective. And then when it goes direct, when it changes motion again, that's more of like there's an, even more of an opportunity to move forward. You know, it, it'll be harder, actually. I think it's probably easier to let go of negative qualities of a planet when it's retrograde and then when it goes direct then then it's like okay you're moving forward this is how you're moving forward with this planet right and then um saturn has been retrograde for a while i forget when it oh, i forgot when it started it ends in end of august it started like two three months ago or something the saturn retrograde is very significant because it's it's ending just after the great american eclipse and uh so it's saturn uh, saturn and jupiter will notice them a little bit more than uranus neptune pluto um but still outer planets, still like 40% of the time, roughly. And Saturn has to do with our uh, responsibilities, with discipline, with structure, with career, with the real world. And and um, when it goes retrograde, it's sort of like a time where we're revisiting, we're, re- we're kind of like building, rebuilding, going back on something. And then when it goes direct, it's like, okay, moving forward with some, with some structure that maybe would you know, we put in place during the retrograde or moving forward with some new responsibilities or something to do with career or something like that. Um, so it's very significant that's changing motion right at the same time as the eclipse. And it's also going to be a Mercury retrograde at that time. And then uh, Uranus is going retrograde beginning of, uh, I think it's the first week of August. It's going retrograde soon too. Yeah, August 3rd, it goes retrograde. And so Uranus has to do with our independence, with our freedom, has to do with uh, what makes us unique, has to do with innovation, has to do with, uh, it could represent rebellion, it could have to do with uh, anything technological. With Uranus going retrograde, then during that, like over the next, from, you know, end of July until 
it's going to really slow down. Then it goes retrograde August 3rd. And over those next few weeks, like that month is when we're going to really notice that Uranus energy more because it's, it's changing motion. Right. So we might be reflecting more on our, on our independence, our freedom, our, you know, if, if, if some people have been, um, some people are in a relationship and they've been thinking about breaking up or if they did break up and got back with that person, there's a good chance that Uranus retrograde might break it up or people might be like concerned. Some aspects of personal freedom and things like that might, might come up for a lot of people during that around that time. Uranus going retrograde is always tough, but it's even tougher when my anus goes retrograde. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that um, was a very, very juvenile joke. But anyways, keep going. Keep going. The Scorpio joke. Um, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so then uh, and then Chiron just went retrograde the Chiron is basically it's kind of like a, they, they call it a minor planet they used to think it was an asteroid and now they call it a minor planet but it's actually a comet the nucleus of a comet that it got basically in the orbit of our sun and it's the bridge between the Saturn which is the last planet we can see with our naked eye and Uranus, which is the beginning of the invisible planets or, or, you know, invisible with the naked eye. And so Saturn up until the closest planets are the visible planets. Um, they more, they have more power in the physical realm. Like they're more, cause they're physical. They're more in the, they're more surface level. And, um, Saturn is in, the, you know, represents like limitation and restriction. And it's also the last planet we see. It's like the limits limits of what we can see right and then chiron is the bridge between our limits our physical limits and the spiritual because then when you get the uranus neptune and pluto have more of um, a deeper spiritual symbolism to them and so chiron is is like the bridge between uh it's the bridge between physical spiritual it's also it could be a bridge in a lot of other ways it's a maverick um it like bridge could bridge two different worlds together but it's called the it's also it's most people refer to it as the wounded healer and so um i always when i do readings with people one of the first thing one of the main things i look at is where's chiron in their chart um i'm really big on chiron i because chiron will show in people's charts like where some of their their cha- biggest challenges some of their deepest wounds are but can also show where your gifts are too but when chiron like right now chiron in this currently in the sky which just went retrograde it could be a time where yeah people are reflecting all those things that i mentioned people are reflecting on some of their blocks their challenges it could be some of their deep wounds or it could have to do with just not as deep like chiron is going retrograde back to where it's been traveling since march so if people look back okay well what's been going from on from march until now what challenges have come up like what challenges, what fears, what blockages or maybe negative patterns, you know, think about what's come up. And this is a time to reflect on them, how you can transcend them, how you how you can own them. And for some people, if some people are healers or teachers or anything like that. It could be a time where they can be reflecting on how they work with that energy, how they help the world with that energy, things like that. For some people it might just be like, you know, how do you tap into your gifts more? What can you do to tap into your gifts? You know, so so that's been retrograde. And, and uh, like some astrologers don't even really pay attention to Chiron because it's not a planet. So you don't always hear about all the Chiron stuff going on. And then uh, Pluto, actually, yeah, Pluto went retrograde, I think, around that time, I think, when Trump bombed Syria or something, I think. So Pluto has to do with, like, power, control. Pluto also represents, like, our secrets. It represents the underworld. It represents, like, suppressed emotions. It represents, like, death and rebirth and transformation. But but for when it goes retrograde, it could be a time where people are reflecting on how they use their power, how they are reflecting on some of their secrets or reflecting on some of their hidden hidden tensions or reflecting on their darkness or reflecting on how they can tap more into their personal power. Um, but like I said, the retrogrades, the outer planet retrogrades, I pay more attention to them when... It's station when it's going stationary. Now Mercury is going to go retrograde during that Great American Eclipse. So the Mercury retrograde is going to be occurring in the same part of the zodiac as where that eclipse is going to be occurring. See, Mercury retrograde is a lot of the stuff you read online. Most of it doesn't talk about retro- Mercury retrograde in this way. They usually just talk about like, yeah, it's could be a chaotic time, whatever, blah blah blah. But like Mercury retrograde is. It always facilitates some tra- sort of transformations. You know, it, it's people, modern astrology, people associate Pluto with transformation. But like Mercury and the re- the changing motion of Mercury was always looked at in traditional astrology as transformation. And uh, Mercury was the traditional ruler of alchemy. So when, when Mercury goes retrograde, there could be like wherever it is in your chart, what house it, it's in, what planets it's heading. It could facilitate some kind of transformation in that area. And, you know, Mercury ret- goes retrograde roughly every three to four months and so 
not every Mercury retrograde is going to be like a significant, profound transformation, but there'll be some kind of shift in that area of your life in some way. There will be some retrogrades that occur every, oh, I forget how many years it is, but every so many years, there's going to be certain retrogrades that are going to be very significant for you. Depending on the Mercury retrograde, like when you were born, like what element, like where the Mercury retrogrades were when you were born, when it, when it comes back to that, then those are the really significant ones. So yeah, so this is all happening while the great American eclipse is happening. It's hitting that powerful star, Regulus. It's then Saturn's going direct. So I see August, September is like probably for on some level for everybody, like major shifts, major changes, you know, things kind of moving forward and new, new beginnings for a lot of people. It's going to be an exciting time. Absolutely, man. I'm always yeah. open to change and growth and new beginnings. And of course, that does mean that certain things have to end as well. But I think endings are, are good, too. I wanted to wrap up on one note here. You know, you mentioned alchemy a minute ago. We're talking about it being ruled by Mercury. And I love alchemy, man. I love reading about it. I love talking about it. It's probably my favorite subject. And I stumbled across an old video of yours on YouTube where you were talking about the alchemical transmutation of the body and using astrology to enhance human potential to help us undergo this alchemical transmutation of our physical bodies. Not, I'm not talking about spiritual alchemy. I'm, I'm just talking about literal physical bodies here. So how can we use astrology for things like health and nutrition and improvements in our personal relationship with ourselves? My approach to what I think you're talking about was working with food and superfoods. I was kind of tackling it from that angle. And there's a way to use astrology. There's ways to use astrology for that. And then there's also ways that are kind of a little more practical. Like you don't really need to consider your astrology. I got into working with superfoods and formulating herbs and things like that around the same time I got into astrology. And I always looked at nutrition from sort of an alchemical perspective. I had a, um, a very power, profound experience from food, <laughs> from, from like an activating experience from nutrition, which is not very common, but it happens to some people. And I'm a, I have a lot of Taurus in my charts. Taurus, you know, food really affects them a lot more, food and substances. And so I, one time I consumed blue-green algae and I had this activation. And, and then around that time, a little bit after, it's when I got into superfoods and all that. And I got into, I got into astrology. I got into all of it all in, like around the same time. When it comes to combining nutrition with astrology, I have a, a sort of general understanding, but my knowledge of that is, is pretty lim more limited. Even though I have a good understanding of both worlds, my like using like consulting with people using their chart and being like, yeah, you should consume this or consume that. I have limited experience with that. So what I've done, I'll, I'll, we'll talk about from an astrological perspective, and I'll talk about from a more practical, non-astrological, well, somewhat astrological perspective. My approach to the physical body, now, I just want to say I'm not a nutritionist. I'm not, like, the most healthiest person right now in my time in my life. I had a bad injury a few years ago, and I haven't been, you know, there's other things, not just nutrition, like physical movement, exercise, like, you know, things like yoga and movement is huge. I realized how important it was. I was, ne I was neglecting that part for a long time. But the, from the nutritional component, I was always more focused on the nutrition, being a tourist. I look at it like I was very much influenced by, I used to follow a lot of David Wolf's work, and he was sort of the guy that made people really aware of like superfoods and tonic herbs, and he, he really popularized it. When you go to a health food store and you see that whole superfood section, right, that, that's because of David Wolf. You know, David Wolf did that. His, his work was huge, and I know a lot of people don't like him now, whatever, but like, you know, he did a lot of monumental what he did. And his work, and not just his work, also just my own intuition, a lot of it was just my own contemplation and intuition i have a good ability to kind of put things together too but he planted a lot of seeds in my head following his work and so i i always look at nutrition and like foods and herbs as sort of like they have a consciousness right you are what you eat and so you know there's foods that we eat just for fuel just for calories just for substance and then there's other foods that you know they have a certain frequency right and so i i was going through a period i did a period a couple of years where i was well, almost four years, well, I was 100% raw. A couple of those years, I was vegan. And I went through a lot of changing, a lot of cleansing. Like when you do like a raw food diet, raw vegan, or if you want to take it further, you do fasting, you you purge a lot of the, that, that can be alchemy. 
the word alchemy, you know, this we can go so many directions with this, but the word alchemy gets kind of thrown around a lot. You know, alchemy could mean literally turning lead into gold, or alchemy could mean your own personal alchemy, your own tr- personal transformation. Alchemy could mean formulating herbs. Alchemy could mean making ornaments in your basement. You know, and so it can mean a lot of things. So I was looking at more from a, I was in a period of my life where I was really focused on my personal development, like like hundred percent, and I was you know really focused, like I said, on diet, and I was doing raw food, and when I did raw food diet i cleansed a lot i purged a lot i helped me to become more aligned with who i truly was um or truly am and the superfoods played a big part part in it i had i I had a huge shift in my consciousness because i believed that the food i was eating affected my consciousness so that's one perspective of it is to cleanse like when you when you consume high vibrational foods high vibrational nutrition and herbs and all that stuff and then if you and if you cut out all the low vibration stuff then you're going to detoxify a lot of low vibrations from your your body your physical and spiritual body you can use nutrition as a one way to uh, to facilitate transformation within yourself. Some people might do it through yoga or through other means. Now, when you look at traditional cultures, especially like, let's say, Chinese culture, Chinese medicine, and they used to look at like a lot of the herbs and superfoods and tonics that they use. They would figure out, this is before modern day science, you know, they would figure out how herbs or foods would affect you by studying them, by seeing, observing what they do in the natural world, and by also meditating with them, tuning into their energy and things like that. And something like blue green algae, for example, which they didn't really have, they didn't have, the Chinese didn't have, but let's say we take their approach. You look at something like blue green algae, which I just, most of it's not edible. There's only a few kinds that are edible, but blue green algae in, in the wild, it's always reproducing, it's regenerating. As a species, it's the first species. It's one of the first, like algae, cyanobacteria, and all that. They're like a creator species. You know, they're, they're the beginning of the food, food chain. They're basically that species is like the cusp between life on Earth and the sun. You're eating the cusp. <laughs> and so and that's why I had a huge profound. It activated me so much when I drank it the first time. And then um, so you look at it like from that perspective, it, it's always regenerating. It's reproducing. It's got a bit of a it's got a bit of a Scorpio energy. And it, it, it's like a yin Scorpio, you know, because it reproduces, regenerates. It's blue green. Blue green is the color for Scorpio. Right. So we can you can look at different herbs and superfoods and you can look at, OK, well, what does it do in nature? Like a big one in Chinese medicine is deer antler. Deer antler velvet, right? And they used to take it for like, you know, if they had injuries to rebuilding their body, they used to take it as like a Chinese Viagra. And and so what is a deer antler it falls off and then a new antler grows. And so they observe that. They're like, oh, this material helps grow a new antler. This will help us with our injuries. This will help us with, you know, so we don't need Viagra. <laughs> We're just gonna, whatever, they didn't have Viagra in those days. But but they would observe what it would do. And they'd be like, okay, well, this is what, how it'll help my body. And, and so you can look at, now is that alchemy? I don't, it depends what you consider alchemy now when you look at like astrology astrology and medicine astrology and herbalism too like there's a whole there's medical astrology you can use astrology as a system to figure out you know these are the potential health problems you could have and um you know that and so you can use that to sort of alchemically formulate your own medicines based on your chart right so if you have like uh let's say you have a weak Jupiter in your chart and Jupiter rules the liver and you have like a, a weak Venus, Venus rules the kidneys and whatever. Maybe you might want to consider having like your ta- your daily herbal tonic that works on those organs because that you're going to have more issues with those organs. And if you really want to take it to the next level, you can formulate it when those planetary energies are strong. Or There's a, a herbalist named Nicholas Culpepper uh, from Britain. I think he was around, it was like a hundred, more probably maybe more than a hundred years ago, I forget. He was a, a astrologer and herbalist and so he was really hardcore he would pick the herbs on certain days when that planet was strong that energy of that planet and then i don't know if, i don't know what he did if you need tinctures or teas or whatever but then you can have the astrology chart for the tincture or whatever and so there's there's that approach and is that alchemy i, I don't know it is i mean when you're out when you're form like when you're formulating things you can people consider that alchemy it depends what you consider alchemy but it's you know it's just a it's a more it's an astrological approach to healing and medicine right so i don't know i hope that answers your question i'll try to answer your question you know what yeah. is alchemy i think just from my own studies and, and research of it is that it it's a process where you transform body mind and spirit and it all works together so you know, yeah. I phrase that question I, by. Oh, go ahead. I I saw I see alchemy as like to fuse to to combine with with higher self to fuse with God to fuse mm-hmm. with the to transcend our 
our negative energies to, and become more aligned with our higher self, more aligned with, with creator energy. So that can be an approach that can be like a, um, a tool for that, you know, like taking these herbal formulas and taking these and not just for, for health, but for like, let's say you have a negative way of expressing your energies, right? Let's say you, you, you have certain behavioral patterns or something right? that and, and healing that is part of your alchemy, too. And so you can do other things other modalities to help meditations or whatever or you can work with crystals or you can alchemically formulate gem elixirs or something absolutely man well i think my uh i hate this term but it's the only term i can think of right now my awakening was or did coincide with better nutrition and diet so now i take yeah. spirulina chlorella every day those are types of allergies uh have I you tried so the e3 live yet no i haven't and i know that the last time you know we talked about this last time we spoke or two times ago that we spoke and i uh i wrote it down and then i lost the note so i'm glad you reminded me of it so it's called oh, yeah. what again called e3 live but it's a afa blue green algae so spirulina is a blue green algae and afa those are the two kinds you can get mm -hmm. spirulina is um is mostly like majority of the spirit all, all the spirulina that it's in the marketplace is farmed and some of it's pretty good some of it's not that good it depends some of it's coming from china it depends some of it, it varies and then there's afa algae which is what's found in klamath lake oregon it's the only edible one you can get is from that lake and it's wild it's a spring fed lake that there's no uh industry around it it's very clean and, and there's always spring water fresh spring water going in this lake is very special. It's a volcanic lake. There's 7,000 years ago, a volcano erupted in that area. And so the whole bottom of the lake is all volcanic minerals, ash. It's not that deep, it's a shallow lake. And so the algae just feeds off all those volcanic minerals. And there's so much algae blooming there. It's Like apparently the fish are dying because the algae is taking the oxygen or something. I don't know something like that and so the more you eat the more vegan it is <laughs> it's it's actually the reason why i'm mentioning it is because it's a lot that's the one that i had a profound shift when i started drinking that and it's more powerful than spirulina it's a little more expensive but it's more powerful because the human body recognizes it a lot better than spirulina the amino acid profile is the same as the human body it has other benefits it's higher in ormus than most spirulinas it's really good for the brain and plus it's just a wild when anything's wild it has it's just a higher consciousness and they have a fresh version a fresh frozen one it's more powerful yeah i, I, I i'm on the site right now i just pulled it up and yeah. i was like man they have an they apple lemon out, flavored version of it which well they came out with flavored ones some people didn't like the yeah. taste but but well, they, it's it's, but it's very you, bitter yeah they came out they also came out that company also came out with a fresh they the first ones come out the fresh frozen spirulina too so i can't get it in canada but you can get it there and uh, but the e3 live is is better it's more powerful but it's good to rotate spirulina is a bit cheap spirulina is good too if you're gonna get one you rotate them but yeah i highly recommend um you know some people i just want to say like it can be really it's detoxing too if you take too much and if you're too toxic you know you got to keep be aware of that with anything like that you know there, there's always could be a small percentage of people that their body doesn't react well to it right but but for the most people most people will will benefit from it most algaes are powder form or all of them like all the spirulina you can get this one in powder too the e3 live you can get powder mm -hmm. powder one's still amazing but the liquid is good because most people they they because they have they've been eating too much you know heavy foods and and foods that body doesn't recognize they have a lot of intestinal plaque they have a lot of blockage in their intestinal tract and their stomach and so their body doesn't absorb as many nutrients because of that and, but when you take the fresh e3 live it bypasses it just absorbs right in it has a 97 percent absorption rate so it's it's good in that case too. Dude, so. this has been awesome. Gosh, Great American Eclipse, cryptocurrency, and now nutritional alchemy. Uh, some practical advice here for everybody, you know, whether you're into astrology or not. Hey, man, you got to get into your own health too, right? So there it is. So Carmen, please remind people where they can keep up with you and your work. I, I'm most active right now on Instagram, actually. So people, they just search my name, Carmen, C-A-R-M-E-N-D-I-L-U-C-C-I-O. That's my, my, my Instagram, at Carmen Duducho. Go to my website, CarmenDuducho.com. Uh, find me on Facebook. And I write for, you know, I'm writing articles on a regular basis for Collective Evolution. You can check them out there. You can check them out if you follow me um, on social media. Or if you go to my website and if you sign up on my mailing list, you'll get all my articles when they come out right to your inbox. Awesome man well carmen deluccio thanks so much again for your time i look forward to talking to you again soon man yeah you too thanks ryan oh my stars that's what my first grade teacher used to say she was a good teacher anyway my thanks again to carmen deluccio 
astrology, alchemy, and algae. These are three of my favorite things. And honestly, what more could you ask for? Stars, superfoods, and self-improvement, you really can't go wrong. I am still unsure of taking a trip for the eclipse. Although I hope if you're near a spot in the path of it that you do show up because I'm sure it'll be fantastic. I'm probably 60-40 now in favor of not going, but I am like 80-20 in favor of calling off work and using that energy on that day to do something more productive for myself. I really am sort of paranoid about the large crowd expected down in Hopkinsville, Kentucky, where I had planned on going. I don't know why, but half a million people doesn't really appeal to me. Even if it's a fraction of that, like 75,000, that's still a bit too rich for my blood. I've seen Apocalypto and Pitch Black. I know what happens here. And you know what? I think what I may do is buy some Bitcoin and some Ethereum on the day of the eclipse. For some reason, that strangely appeals to me. I gotta buy some regardless. I already have a little bit of that Bitcoin, but I do think it'd be nice to have more, all things considered. I did, though, I did buy some E3 Live blue-green algae, which is really exciting to me for some reason. I guess because I can't wait to see if it activates all my previously dormant feel spots and alchemically transmutes me into some super celestial being. That'll be a hell of a trip report. Hey, bro. Dropped a couple spoonfuls of AFA blue-green algae the other night. Now I feel really healthy. Like, cellularly dude. Anyway, I gotta get the hell out of here. If you like what you heard, hit that subscribe button, drop the show a five-star review on iTunes, and please do consider supporting us at oculturepodcast.com slash support. All those things help me tremendously, and the donations especially can help free me up to produce longer episodes and more of them, which you know I'd love to do. Regardless, thanks for lending me your ear holes. I hope they don't feel too violated, and if they don't, We'll get them good next time. Until then, you've just been initiated into a culture. I am Ryan Peverly, reminding you to love yourself, think for yourself, question authority, and keep looking up. Oh, 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 oh